Welcome to the Republic Forum, and uh, tonight it's just a, just me. Thomas isn't here, and uh, hopefully we've uh, we are expecting a guest, or I should say, I'm. Did I use the right pronoun there? Yes. Uh, we is the right pronoun, or I? I. Okay, because you know sometimes I don't know. You know, I'm talking with the producer Matt here. Um, you know, this word salad did uh, all of a sudden starting to come out. But hey, listen, welcome to the Republic Forum. It's uh, third Thursday. It's the opening of Third Thursday. Boy, I wish I had a better night for this. I would have really liked to have seen it in the mid-80s and a lot of people. But you know what? Come on down because there are going to be a lot of people on the street. There's going to be a lot of great food. Um, I, I wish I could tell you there are going to be a lot of great politicians out there. But if they're the locals, eh, so much for that. But uh, anyway, no, our mayor should be out here, I hope. And, uh, hey, stop by and talk to them and ask some questions. And, you know, uh, maybe the uh, senior center slash community center is going to be open. Come on down, tour, tour that if you can. So, anyway, there are going to be a lot of things to do. The first night uh, for uh, third Thursday since uh, COVID. So, listen, I think it's going to be great. We're going to have a good time. And... Uh, I uh, look forward to seeing you all down here. But uh, until then, um, let's see. What are we going to do? Oh, why don't we uh, talk about, uh, you know, the word salad and his pronouns. And I will take your phone calls. So um, some of this stuff is, I think, is personally, it's just getting out of control. I mean, are we really interested in letting this uh teeny percentage of the population, and once again, these all my opinions, um, kind of telling us how everything's supposed to go and exactly what we're supposed to do, how we're supposed to say it, how we're supposed to think it, and on and on. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's just crazy. So, you know, the other thing, too, is um, this Roe versus Wade deal. Wow. You know, uh, what, what side of the fence are you on with this? I mean, from what I understand and uh, from listening to everything, it's all going to come back to the states. And each individual state will be able to make up their own mind on what's going on. So, you know, I think that's a great opportunity right there. So anyway, um, I'll be right back in a moment. So uh, stay tuned. Yeah. Well, uh, I've got a very distinguished guest uh, just walked through the door, uh, Mr. Peter Lamage, who, who is uh, running in a, in a primary with other Republicans now, and um, for state senate against Richard Blumenthal. For U.S. Senate. For U.S. That Senate. US How Senate, did I get yes. get that one wrong? No. U.S. Senate. Well. well Welcome. Thank you for having me. Appreciate oh, it. absolutely. To to Glad to have you. Believe Thank me, you. I tell, give everybody out here your story because I I've heard it and it's fabulous. Well, and anybody that's not interested in voting for you, I think's lost their mind. <laughs> uh, well, um, the story began 32 years ago, where my uh, when my three brothers and I decided to escape communist Albania, and, and at that time. Anyone who even thought about escaping would have been either uh, imprisoned or executed, let alone tried to escape, because that was the law of the, under the, the communist uh, um, regime that we had. So it, uh, we would, uh, it took us about 72 hours to cross from Albania into what used to be Yugoslavia, and we used to walk at night and hide during the day because the, the guards could have caught us and executed us. Uh, once we uh, arrived in Yugoslavia, it was a refugee camp, uh, we found out that uh, Albanian government agents actually showed up. They rounded up my family, uh, seven siblings that I left behind, nieces, nephews, my parents, and took them into a camp, a concentration camp. And uh, that's where they tortured my father to death because he had failed to notify the government, as required, supposedly. 
that his sons wanted to escape. But the most interesting observation that uh, we could make uh, at that time, or anyone can make, is that the only ones who had guns at that time were government agents because we didn't have a Second Amendment. So my family was not able to defend itself against the government. And uh, look, uh, it took us about nine months to be processed at the camp. Uh, uh, we were subjected to background investigation, medical examination, and then eventually winded up in Detroit. We were sponsored by a uh, uh, church in Detroit and uh, eventually wanted up in New York didn't speak word of English at that time didn't have any money didn't know many people here uh, and uh, you know New York uh, started working you know we uh, worked in McDonald's worked in Burger King's restaurants you know supporting ourselves and eventually went to college uh, after graduated from college uh, I was able to work for the Julian administration investigating white collar crimes then I went to law school unfortunately and became an attorney but I'm a conservative <laughs> Attorney, so. uh, and you know, it, uh, look, uh, it's an interesting journey that we took. But I uh, firmly believe that my father was willing to sacrifice his life so his sons could live in freedom. And we did find freedom and opportunity here in the United States. As America has been great to us. Well, you know, and I, one of the things I think is a lot of people have lost sight of exactly how great America is today. You know, people want to badmouth us and say, you know, this, that, and the other thing, but everybody wants to come here. I mean, we, you know, we don't have, you know, walls up or like we, maybe we should, but we don't have a mass exodus. Yes. Uh uh, the greatness, uh, Reagan said years ago that the greatness of the United States can be seen or should be seen through the eyes of refugees. Uh, we see the greatness of this country when we come over here because we know what we left behind. What bothers me sometimes is that uh, recently immigration has changed completely and we have people coming to the United States not for the greatness of this country any longer, not for the, for Americanism. They are coming, coming here for the benefits that we provide to them now. And that has changed everything. Um, you, you, you see that in certain places in the United States, and even in our state of Connecticut, illegals have greater rights sometimes than we as American citizens. If yep. you're an illegal in, uh, in our state, you can go to a state college or university and you would pay in state tuition. Yet if my nieces and nephews who live in New York, if they decide to go to Yukon, they would pay out of state tuition. So we're penalizing Americans and rewarding the ones who broke our laws who shouldn't be here to begin with. Well, you know, that, and it's, it's, it bothers it bothers me sometimes. Oh, wait, no, it is bothersome. It, you know, just take the recent baby formula deal where they had yes. caches of it down at the border yep. for the immigrants coming yep. over, and yet American citizens, That's, you know, were going without. Yeah. And, you know, um, it, people that listen to the show know I'm a Trumper, mm. and, uh, you know, I believe in American mm. first. You know... It's like the family. If you're not taking care of your family, how can you take care of other people outside of that? You know, it all starts at home. Uh, this is why this... Uh this midterm election is going to be one of the most significant elections since Reagan, if not since Lincoln. Because we're either going to redefine or go back to the foundation of this country and reestablish constitutionalism again, uh, or we're losing the country. Because we live in a post-constitutional republic right now. Correct. You look at the threats that the United States is facing, that is both ideological threats and institutional threats. threats. The ideology that we're embracing right right now, wants to replace our Republican form of government with judicial decisions. They want to rule us by judicial decisions and agencies that are empowered by the by, by Congress to, to, to perform their job, if you will. But then you look at the, the institutional threat, which is more significant, I would say, is that we have lost the separation, separation of powers completely. There's, oh, abso absolutely. And, and, and you, you have a very active... Uh, Executive, and at some point we had judici judiciary as well, but now it's you know is, is coming back to the confines of the Constitution, and we have a Congress that is sitting in there. You know what? They're not doing their job. <laughs> no, they're they, not. We elect them to do that job. Only Congress, both the House and the United States Senate, are the only ones who can shape the president's agenda. 
and they are not shaping the president's no. agenda. No. And and this is this is where we have to reestablish that constitutional republic that we have again, and then you know separate the powers and have federalism, uh, independent states within the federal uh, form of government that we have again. No, I, mm. I believe in that wholeheartedly, mm. and that, and that, that's one of the things mm. that really made this country mm. great. Uh, is having the separa separation of powers, the free thinking, uh, going back and forth, the ideas, the checks and balances, yep. and right now we're we're just missing all that. So uh, you want to run for Senate and get involved, and in, uh, I'm sure you've got some great ideas. Um, yeah, um, uh, we went to the convention, uh, and uh, I qualified for a primary. There is going to be a primary. I'm the only, you know, consistent conservative in this race. I mean, I got involved in uh, politics 10 years ago, and uh, almost 11 years ago. And I always maintained the position that a conservative, as long as you define properly what conservatism is, it will serve America well. And when we talk about conservatism, we have allowed the left to define us. What a conservatives, a conservatives want to do is that they want to preserve and conserve what's good for this country. And what's good for this country is the founding documents of this country, is the Judeo-Christian values that we have. It's that uh, uh, Americanism that makes us exceptional. When we could talk about American exceptionalism, it doesn't mean that God loves us more than other people or that we're better looking than the other, you know, the rest of the world. Or it, it, it is that connection or that arrangement between the people and the government for the first time in the world's history, we had a document, uh, 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 a document called the Declaration of Independence where the Founding Fathers clearly told us that life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness are God-given rights, not government-given rights. Correct. And then they wrote a constitution giving the federal government enumerated powers. Well, they admitted that, the government. Yeah, they did and, to make sure that these rights are not infringed upon. Absolutely. And this is this is one thing that, if I were to and and if I were to go to the United States uh, uh, Senate, that is the first thing we have to do to reestablish that Americanism again that we need. But then the most significant job that the U.S. Senate would have would be, you know, sh shaping the Federal Reserve one more time, bringing the Federal Reserve within the confines of the law, because they can do that. Uh, they are destroying our currency. Oh, absolutely. Look at the purchasing power of the dollar. Look at the, <laughs> the, look at the inflation that is created by design. You know, and that's something that really bothers me. You know, there, there's something going on this, in this country, and it is by design. There is a group or a fraction or whatever you want to call them out there trying to destroy us from within. The currency depreciation is preventing you and I and ordinary folks like us from creating wealth and equity in this country, which is a God-given right. And they are going after us. The only one who is making money during the inflation, the currency depreciation, is the government through taxation, which is, it, it, it's a taxation without legislation that they are imposing upon us. Yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, I, I miss the parts where they actually legislate this the correct way, instead of just also on declaring this, that, or the other I, thing. I, and the other thing that the Supreme Court is going to be very important. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen. I mean, the Democrats, they want to pack the Supreme Court. As mm -hmm. I said, they, they want to rule us by judicial decisions if they could, because they know that the American people is not going to stand uh, and embrace the failed liberal policies that they are trying to implement in this country. Uh, so the Supreme Court is going to be uh, very important. Uh, I'm a constitutionalist. Um, I would be an originalist. And if someone doesn't believe in the Constitution the way it is written, uh, I shouldn't be in the Supreme Court. Uh, so I would be a staunch supporter of constitutionalism. I'm a Second Amendment guy. I'm pro-life. I believe in life from, you know, uh, uh, conception to natural death. I mean, these are things that separate me from other uh, candidates. And the character, I would say, or the the fearlessness that I'm fighting for these principles regardless of what happens at the end. I'm not changing my position because I came here today and maybe I found out that you're more conservative than, let's say, another radio show that would have me two days from now. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you the exact same thing that I would tell the other guy, even if he never inv invites me to that show again. Because America is worth fighting for. Oh, these I agree. These principles are right for, uh, right for and, and I've seen other candidates that, uh, you know, 
I don't see the distinction between certain candidates that we have in the Republican Party and the Democrats. Oh, no. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. <laughs> you know, uh, being in the show and being a little involved in uh, politics, you're absolutely right. Um, but fighting for th this country and its greatness is definitely important. So, um, yeah, I just lost that thought. But no, I... I think we have an opportunity. I don't know if you're going to commercial or not, but uh, we have an opportunity. No, no. And I think that if the Republicans are fearless in embracing conservatism and giving a conservative a chance to run for U.S. Senate this time, we can win this because we have tried from 2006 to present. We have lost as Republicans every statewide election. And all the candidates who got the nomination, they were the party's, nominee, uh, party's favorites, and they were afraid to be Republicans. Yeah. And we keep on losing because of that. Well, you know, and, and mm. that's true. And, mm. You know, I see a lot of people mm. that get up there, get mm. elected, and, mm. and uh, you mm. know, don't they lose their spine, their yeah. backbone. Mm. And, uh, mm. you know, after a while, and sometimes I think it's just from the pressure mm. and mm. where they are, they end up conforming. And, no, we don't mm. want that. We don't need another Liz Cheney or... Mitt Romney in the United States Congress or Senate. No, we don't. We just don't need that. <laughs> the other thing is this. If we, Blumenthal can be defeated on issues, he needs someone like me who will go after him fearlessly on the failed policies, on his corruption, on the fact that he had the audacity of going to the Communist Party USA and claiming that he was elated to be there and proud of the work that they are doing. The Communist Party, you say, would love to destroy this country and yes. the, the republic form of, uh, Republican form of government that we have. What an insult when you have a United States senator who got sworn in to defend, protect, and uphold the Constitution of the United States, and you attend an event from the Communist Party, you say. But then, to be fair, he apologized three days later. He said, I didn't know I was there. Yeah. So I think he's hanging out with Joe Biden a little too much. <laughs> Absolutely. A little dementia <laughs> setting in early. But, you know, I heard somebody mention something something interesting uh, the other day when you have uh, these uh, elected officials that uh, you know swear an oath to yep. protect and all that yep. and they don't do it um, that they should be able to be sued individually uh, for you know not upholding you know th their sworn duties <laughs> If you and I were to get sworn in to, uh, to do certain things, it's like signing a, uh, an, an affidavit where you get sworn in that you're telling the truth, that you're going to do Correct. that. It's a contract that you have with the American right. people. So, but there are no consequences no. right now for them that it, for anyone that breaks that contract. Well, they have become professional, and the founding fathers never wanted us to have professional politicians. They wanted ordinary people like you and I to go over there, serve in Washington for a certain amount of time, and go back to the private sector. So, mm. it, you know, if you were to get mm. into uh, the Senate, mm. um, term limits. Oh, I, I believe in term limits. Yeah. I you know, know I do. well, I, do. I, I know we mm. have, you yeah. know, even we mm. uh, have Democrats mm. on the show, and they mm. say, well, they already exist. All you have to do is vote us out. Well, that's a different story. I mean, you know, once they get there, they create so many, they do so many favors with our money that, uh, I mean, we have people that have been elected senators, U.S. senators, that have been there for, what, 35, 40 years. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, some of them have been uh, in Washington so long that, uh, you know, they wouldn't even know how to, to come to this town. Well, you're right. yeah. well Joe Biden's a perfect Joe example. Biden, yeah. His entire life, pretty much, is yeah. political, political life. life. And well, what's, what's, um, what happens when you have these uh, professional career politicians, it's interesting when they get involved in politics, they don't have that, the amount of wealth that will distinguish them from you know, certain people in their town, if you will. Then by the time they've been there for 10, 15, 20 years, 30 years, they become millionaires and billionaires somehow. Oh, yeah. oh. And that bothers me when you have a... It, 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 someone who gets involved in politics and becomes rich. But if it were the opposite, when you have rich people getting involved in politics after they've made the money in private sector, that doesn't bother me because you made it in private sector. Well, the other thing, too, mm -hmm. is, you know, we've got mm -hmm. a, a, a lot of politicians mm -hmm. uh, that have never built mm -hmm. anything, never done mm -hmm. anything, run a business, you know, uh, they've raised their family, mm -hmm. been professional mm -hmm. politicians, mm -hmm. so they don't have the, the base of experience. 
than a lot of other individuals. This is where I disagree with uh, some can some uh, some of the candidates when they tell me that even the Republicans, oh, that I've been reelected 15 times or 20 times, and you know, on the state uh, assembly or state senate or something, you know, if you've been there for 15 15 terms or 10 terms or whatever number of terms, and you couldn't get anything done, why should it trust you now to get you reelected or send you or give you a promotion? <laughs> well, that, that, that's a really good point. But we we are going to take a break, station break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Republic Forum. I'm Jeff, and uh, with me is Mr. Peter Lamage, and we'll continue with your story. Go on, Peter. Well, thanks. Thanks again. I really appreciate you having me. Um, look, I think that uh, what's, what's going to happen uh, during this primary, we need to energize the base. There is, there is a way of winning this election, and we cannot win this election by applying the same uh, um, strategies, if you will, that we did before. What we have to do, we have to, for the primary, first of all, we need the base. If the base doesn't get out to vote, uh, we're, we're gonna lose, I'm going to lose again. Because I'm the only conservative that I've stayed around, I came around, I campaigned all over the state, but the base is going to be important. Now, whoever wins the primary has a chance to win the general against Blumenthal. There was a poll that came out today, a little skewed, but I'm the one who is leading with the independents. So what we're trying to do, if I win the primary, uh, we're going to go into the cities because we have to energize, to, we have to get a certain number of voters from the city. So it's the base, it's the cities, and then there are certain ethnic groups that we have to tap into in order for us to recruit them into the Republican Party. There are about 75,000 Eastern Europeans that live in United in, in our state that they are American citizens. They escaped socialism and communism like I did. All we have to do, and I tried that in 2014, we experimented with that, we have to go to their social clubs and community centers and churches and talk to them because they fear the government. Mm -hmm. they, they just don't trust the government. So what we did in 2014, we experimented with Waterbury, and we got 48.7% of the vote for, that's, for, that's uh, for Secretary of the State. Yes, yeah. And we can win those towns, but we have to have this, this effort that we go to these groups, we go to these cities, and we energize the base, and then we have to deal with the commonsensical Democrats, what I call them. These are people that voters that are very much disenchanted with the failed liberal policies in our state and in our nation. I was, you know, I was going to bring that up. I mean, there have got to be a lot of uh, uh, Democrats that are, you know, upset with what's going on in our school yes. systems right now. Uh, you know, all over, the, you know, the inflation that's going on, uh, the lack of accountability by our politicians for these areas. But no, going into the cities and... It, it, talking to it, people. It's a must. It's a oh, must. Absolutely. If we don't do that, it's a must because but this, uh, But if we run away from conservatism, if we run away from what Republicans stand for, we're not going to be able to win the general election. A weak neat Republican is not going to get elected against Blumenthal. Blumenthal has more money than any one of us who would run for that position. He's got over $100 million in his bank account, uh, personal bank account. He's got about $7 million in his uh, campaign account. So we're not going to out raise him. We have to outwork him and get out there and point out to the voters, are you better today than you were four years ago under the previous administration? Are you better today than you were before, uh, than you were three years ago when Trump was the president? Why are you running away from Trumpism? Why are the Republicans ashamed sometimes or afraid to support the policies implemented by the previous administration? Yeah, no, I, I don't understand and that, it. That, that, that's a concern that we should have. We have one of my opponents didn't even vote for President Trump, and she's a Republican. And she had the audacity of saying that, oh, I wrote another name in. I don't know if she did, but if you didn't vote for the president who was a sitting president, a sitting Republican president, why should I vote for you? Oh, I, I, I agree. I mean, then you have the other one who wrote an article in 2016 in, in Greenwich in one of the newspapers there, and was an op-ed that pretty much destroyed the character of the president making up things about the, uh, the, 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 the sitting president or the, the candidate at that time. And now all of a sudden, oh, I'm a Trump supporter. Yeah. We, we, we have to screen these candidates properly. And that's where the voters, the, 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 uh, the primary, it's good because it gives us a chance to get out there and the voters get to see us, get to question us, get to look into our background, our record, and then make the proper determination. Because the party is not very fond of the fact that 
I'm going to primary. I mean, there is pressure. Yeah, oh, we clear the field for uh, Themis. And I got 20% of the delegates. I've traveled all over the state. I raised almost $500,000 for this campaign. So I'm going to primary because I believe that the voters deserve a chance to vote to, 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 to vote for the candidate that they most identify with and trust on, that, uh, on the positions of that candidate. No, I, I agree. And you know what? One other thing, a lot of, especially the base, uh, we can smell a wishy-washy yeah. Republican. You know, somebody that, you know, that's been on one side of the fence kind of, you know, plays the middle of the field and doesn't necessarily stick to the conservative principles that a lot of us really hold near and dear to us. So, no, it, you know, you're refreshing in, in this respect. Well, we have tried, you know, center-left Republicans, if you will. And we can go all the way back to, you know, as I said, to 2006. And, you know, every time we run away from our principles, it turns out that more Republicans are leaving the party and becoming either independent, unaffiliated, or just not bothering to vote any longer because we're not giving them a reason to get out, or reasons to get out and vote. We're not doing that. Why? And I tell the leadership of the party sometimes when they have these conversations and other people, look, we have tried uh, moderates, and I'm fine with that. But let's try conservative. It's mm -hmm. your conservative. And if it doesn't work, we'll go back to moderates again. But so far, I have tried all moderates, and all of them have lost. Correct. Correct. So no, let's try conservative. Absolutely. I, I agree with yeah. you. You know, and even with the um, opposing parties, uh, you know, the, the Democrats, with what they're doing now, you'd think it would push more Republicans to get out and vote, but no, they no. don't for some reason. And that, that always, you know, uh, but befuddles me. I mean, we we talk a lot about local budget mm. votes and the poor, poor turnout. Mm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we we can't afford poor turnout anymore. They've got to get out. You know, kind of like the gas prices. Yep. They've got to get out and vote so we can do something. Look, what's happening with the economy right now is affecting each and every one of us. Unless you're a millionaire and billionaire that you couldn't care less about the inflation because you can afford that. Uh, I mean, you know, but look at the prices, the electricity. Look at look look what ever source is doing into our state. Look, I mean, we are under attack from both the left, the failed policies and the, 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 the left, uh, the, the, the scope and reach of the government from the left, and then the lack of the backbone of the Republican elected officials to fight back this madness that is approaching. And we need more Republicans who are outspoken, who are not afraid, uh, who will stand up and say, hold on a second, we're not pushing this further. We're going to stand up and fight, and I don't mean physically fight, but we're going to fight for these principles because we believe in these principles. Well, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's important that we stand up and, do, you know, push mm -hmm. the principles mm -hmm. and fight that way before it actually becomes a fight at some <laughs> point, you know, because none of us want that. Uh, it's interesting because Arnold Toynbee years ago said that great civilizations are not murdered. They commit suicide. Yeah, well, and, we're and, committing suicide. Aren't we as a nation committing suicide? I mean, everything that I left behind in Eastern Europe 32 years ago is coming to the United States. Socialism is here. The question is, how can you defeat it? I would be the best equipped United States senator to do that. Because I've seen that movie and I don't like the ending of it. No, I, I can tell you a lot about that movie. And it's not, you know, it sounds good on a piece of paper, but the ending of that movie is not good at all. So we better defeat this evil ideology that is coming here. Right. You, you know, and uh, to, to talk a little bit about that, we have uh, Joe Biden talking with Venezuela right now uh, to purchase oil. Some, you, know, uh, you know, somebody that's on Putin's side and he, he's uh, going down to Cuba to do certain things there too. So, you know, they're reaching out to a lot of these socialist countries. Well, we're, we're empowering them by enriching them, those dictators. Yeah. All we have to do with energy is just unleash the production of the energy in the United States. If Trump was able to do that in four years and make us energy independent in four years, I don't think that then all we have to do just reinstate those policies, regardless of our political differences with the previous administration, and I mean our, I mean theirs, but 
you know, reinstate those policies. We don't have to go to Russia. We don't have to go to Venezuela. We can produce oil in the United States. We yep. can even export it instead of import it. And that's what um, you know. That's what the left is doing. I mean, it's 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 enriching and empowering dictators all over the world by purchasing their uh, energy. Yeah, but you know, you know, it's funny. You know, we're talking about conservatism mm -hmm. here, but you know. Um, Democrat, there are a lot of Democrats out there that are conservatives. I mean, you know, if you're a conservative, it benefits you, it benefits everybody. I mean, when you go to the grocery store and you're using a coupon, you're actually being a conservative. You know, when you're shopping for the best phone, internet supplier, or whatever, you're being a conservative. I mean, a lot of people are conservative just because of the way they do, and they I, don't think about it as being political. But, but what happened is that we have allowed the left and the media to define what conservatism is. And as Republicans, when we are told that you're a conservative and we wind up defending ourselves instead of just saying, yes, I am and I'm proud of it. Yeah. And and so are you. You want good schools? Guess what? You're a conservative. Right. You want good neighborhoods? Guess what? You're a conservative. You want a law and order in this country? Yes. You're a conservative. You want lower taxes? You're a conservative. These are American principles, and we call them conservative principles. Right. You want limited government? Look at the scope and reach of the government. Look at the deficit. Look at the inflation. Look at, look at what's happened in the United States because of the government you know, overreaching where government does not belong. And all we're saying is conservatives, okay, bring the government within the confines of the Constitution, what the founding fathers told the government to do, that you have enumerated powers. Right now, the government, the federal government, is part of every aspect of our lives. Oh, it, it is. It is full command and control of, uh, all over. Right, and, and that's not the and way it, it was supposed it, to be. No, no. And the more power you give the government, the less... Uh, uh, Freedom. freedom and liberty and rights we have yeah. and reclaiming that liberty is going to take a lot of work and this is where we're struggling right now because we are raising a generation or generations of Americans not knowing that the government should be limited not educating them properly not teaching them about the United States and the greatest of this country as a matter of fact we're teaching them how to hate this country right. uh, yeah I've, I've seen that it's, what an insult is that oh it is it's, uh, it's insulting yes and we we're, we're telling everyone that the racists and sexists and homophobes and you name it. And then millions of people from all over the world want to come here. Yeah. If we're so bad, how can we attract them? We don't see millions of Americans going to Cuba or China, North Korea or Albania for that matter. Right. But we see them coming here. Oh, yeah. And this is, this is something that our educational system, which is pretty much predominated by the government uh, uh, at this point, uh, it's, it's, it's failing our kids. And it's oh, failing it, it, generations to come to prepare them to love this country, to work hard for this country, to defend this country, to defend the principles of this country. And, and we're not doing that. We're failing our kids. No, we, we are. I, yeah. I agree with you 100 percent there. Uh, you know, and uh, working in small towns, you know, our education budgets are usually 80 percent of the budget yeah. and on and on. And now you have Merrick Garland and some of these uh, officials that if you stand up at a, a PTO meeting or and start asking them questions or getting upset with them, you're you're they're labeling you a terrorist, which is like nuts. You know, we I, have freedom of speech I, to do this. I mean, you know, you can't walk up and grab them by the throat, I, but you know, express your opinion. Look, that was the uh, that's what happened. I mean, the the when the Democrats or the liberals uh, start calling you names, pretty much they want to shut down conversation and discussion. And I think that as Republicans, we have to have that backbone again that if I'm accused of being a racist, I mean, I should just turn around and say, okay, I heard you. Now let's talk about issues. You're right. They're going to call you sexist. Say, I heard you. Let's talk about issues. And that's how you shut them down. Right. Right. But if we start arguing that, no, I'm not, I have no reasons to defend myself for something that I'm not. I, sh I shouldn't even entertain that thought. Correct. I'm not in goodbye. Let's move on. Let's talk about issues. And yes, the left has the tendency of accusing you know, parents nowadays that, or oh, if you come to a, uh, a parent meeting, an you know, association or something, and you disagree with the Board of Education or the elites, you will be the guy who, you'll become a target. Right. And right. all you're doing, you're just trying to educate your children properly. Well, you want to know what's... Well, the, the, you know, it, it was from a movie. It, you know, it, one of our jobs is to question our government. You know, to question our elected officials, whether it be, you know, local, federal, and on and on. And, and that's ask questions. And then we should get answers. But that is the arrangement the Constitution gives us, that the government serves us instead of us serving the government. Correct. 
and that's why they have they are answerable, if you will, to the people, and they should be. Yeah, and for all of and us they, that are I, married, I, we I, already I, serve one person <laughs> as it is. I mean, you know. <laughs> you know uh, but I think that uh, the Republican Party has an opportunity this year. Uh, I've said this in 2018, and I meant it. It was ours to lose, and we lost it. Mm -hmm. It is ours to lose this time, and if we lose it this time, I think we have gotten to the point that it's a critical point for the United States. It is a critical point, and as I said before when Reagan said, look at the greatness of this country through the eyes of refugees, we see the greatness, but we also see the danger that is coming to this country. Well, see, I, I, mean, I don't think the uh, young generations realize uh, exactly what they're going to lose. You know, uh, in, you know, I go back to when I was a kid and I got to ride in the back of a pickup truck, yeah. sit on tailgates yep. and, you know, do all that kind of stuff. And kids today don't get to experience any of this kind of thing. You know, granted, was it dangerous? Yeah, and on yeah. and on. But it was living life. Yep. I when I talk to, uh, um, to people and they tell me that you've been involved in Iran before, and I tell them that this is just a warm-up, I didn't start the workout yet, because America is worth fighting for. Oh, and I'm going to do that to the day I die, because I want to make sure that everything that I found here 32 years ago, when I was embraced by the American people and became an American citizen, I want to make sure those freedoms and liberties remain for my children and grandchildren and generations to come, because we have nowhere else to go. Well, this is true, and I, you know, I would expect everybody out there to want their uh, children and grandchildren and future generations well, to the, the love left, this country. The left is not interested in providing freedom and liberty because the biggest threat to the Democrat Party is it's, it's prosperity through liberty, and they don't want certain groups to prosper in the United States. They want to have a permanent underclass, and as Republicans, we should be fearless when Trump. Talk to the black community. I mean, he used the language when he said, what the, what, what, do you have to lose? You yeah. look at Bridgeport. You look at Hartford. Hartford, not even 80 years ago, 90 years ago, was one of the richest towns or cities in the United States. Yep. Today is one of the poorest ones. Yeah. Yep. Oh, no. I, the they, Democrats they, have been running that city. You look at Bridgeport, the same thing. You look at New Haven, the same thing. And as Republicans, we should be fearless. When we point out the Democrat Party wants to have a permanent underclass in the United States, it's a voting bloc. They want to make sure that certain people depend on the government. Well, you know, and I'm surprised, mm. you know, over mm. over the mm. you know past ten years that mm. this has been going on, mm. that those mm. uh, parties haven't re recognized mm. what's happening to the, them and how they're being used. Yep. You but know? we have, we should point that out. Oh, That's absolutely. when Trump did very well when he pointed these things out in a very simple way. And people understood that. People identified with his, you know, principles of Americanism. That when he said Republicans, we want everybody to prosper. We want everybody to be safe. We want everybody to have a job. That is the biggest threat to certain, you know, Democrats out there. If everybody's got a job and they prosper and they have liberty, they don't need the government. Well, this is true. Mm -hmm. and, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, they, mm -hmm. this is a great platform because, you know, it, it, from what I see, mm -hmm. all the Democrats mm -hmm. are going to run mm -hmm. on is racism. Oh. Uh, and, and these stupid hot button things just to get everybody, you know, uh, r rambled up so that they're not really thinking with their heads. I think they are thinking, but they are thinking how it benefits them to get reelected. We yeah. have these elected officials that pretty much destroyed our businesses, created unemployment, created inflation, failed this country. And now they are telling us, vote for me again so I can save my job. Yeah. <laughs> we as voters have to wake up and say, hold on a second, you failed us. Why would I vote for you again? Well, because they, they, they made the mistake and they <laughs> failed us, so <laughs> now they know how to <laughs> correct it. Yes, yes. Well, that's what I hear when someone says that, oh, I was reelected 15 times, okay, and you couldn't do anything 15 times. Yeah, just go home, go to the private sector. Right, absolutely. So move into the private well, sector. Well, they couldn't go to the private sector because they'd fail in the private uh, yes, sector. Yes, that's, that's a challenge that they you're would right. face. That's yeah, a, you know, that's a somebody can they, say no or uh, you're fired. You bet they would be fired, but uh, voters should fire certain politicians. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I think that, you know, the moment that the voters realize that someone is becoming a professional politician, I think that they should terminate that kind of contract that they have with, with this uh, individual. Mm -hmm. uh, and unfortunately, uh, we have repeating these mistakes time and again, and we have weakened the United States by doing that.
And I think this is the one I said before that this this midterm election is so significant that I think it can go all the way back to 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 Lincoln. That's how significant it's going to be. It is the the it is the foundation of this country that has been shaken. Oh, they've been and chipping we, away at it for the, sure. And it's piecemeal, and people don't realize it sometimes. I mean, you talk about the Second Amendment, and unfortunately, every time that there is a tragedy somewhere, it is always the legally the the the, the, uh, the American citizens who legally own a gun that are guilty of you know something that they didn't do. Right. It, we become the target. Yes. Uh, and and you know these are and eventually they want to do away with that amendment if they could. Oh, I, they I, would I, do it. Believe me, I understand. And when I that. tell people that when you go back to what happened in Eastern Europe. 1940s, 50s, and 60s, the first thing that the government did in those countries, they disarmed their population. And they started, after that, persecuting and prosecuting anyone who disagreed with them politically. Yep. And that's, this is, there's a reason that the Founding Fathers gave us the Second Amendment as the second one right after the first. And it's not about hunting. It's not about sports. Yeah. It is about you and I having the ability to defend ourselves against a tyrannical government, believe it or not. Oh, that no, I, the, I believe it. You know, and, and, you know, when I tell people this, it's like, oh, well, you, you, you were not even, you know, born in the United States. How would you know that? All you have to do is just research it and read it. Oh, yeah. And it's there. It, it's right it's there. there. Absolutely. Clear, clear that, as day. Oh, no, absolutely. It's, it's an absolutely. important. So, but that's, it, that's going to be an important election for oh, sure. Oh, Significant no. election. I, I, I agree. No. I agree. Mm. And I'm looking forward to it. I mean, mm. I'm, I'm still mm. watching what's going on in Pennsylvania to see what's going to go on. Yeah, I, I don't know if there. Dr. Oz uh, was declared I, a winner yet. Uh, yeah, he hasn't been declared. He's uh, ahead by 1,200 votes. And he has the, uh, the, 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 um, the, endorsement, the endorsement from Trump. Yes, he does. And... Mm. and um, mm. Uh, you know, one of the other things, too, is, you know, uh, it's mail-in ballots, again, yeah, that's holding them up. I know, up. that's, I know. Uh, you I know, this that. is, the, mm. the voting is something mm. we've got to get control of again. I don't care mm. if it's, mm. you know, if we make it two mm. days open, but we got to stop all this mail-in mm. stuff. You know, unless you're mm. out of the country, we've got to really yep. define it. And, and then at the end of the night, you know, back in the 50s and the 60s, uh, in the 70s, yeah. we, we knew who the president was yes. by midnight. Yep. You know, and, and now we didn't even have these advanced technological right, right, things. Right. So. <laughs> you know, it didn't it's come true. across our phone. It's it was so still true. attached to the yep. wall. Yep. But uh, mm -hmm. we knew these things because yes. and, and we trusted them. Of course. And, and of I course. think that's yeah. a big problem right mm -hmm. now is people are losing mm -hmm. their trust in the government. Yeah, they are. They are. They don't believe that the system is fair. That the system is treating you know certain political you know groups fairly, and if we lose that, is it's not a good thing. When when you look at the voter fraud in our state, for example, we are about uh, not even you know one to two percent of the U.S. population, but then almost fifteen percent of voter fraud allegations emanate from our state. Every single year, you have that. Every single year. You even have Democrats accusing Democrats of voter fraud. Then if Democrats accuse Democrats of voter fraud, you bet there is voter fraud. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's like the Supreme Court justices yeah. probably knowing who the leaker is. Yes. Uh, all right. But, Peter, I want to thank you for coming well, to the show. You. It's been great thank having you. you. Thank you. And uh, thank you. till every, everybody, till mm -hmm. next week, good night and God bless.